We all knew the military parade was coming, but there was no message or speech delivered directly by the leader Kim Jong-un. Instead, there were interesting details spotted. Let's turn to our defense affairs correspondent Oh Soo-young for more insight into the occasion. Welcome, Soo-young. Great to be here, Tommy. So before we get to the technical aspects, the military parade on Wednesday night was the largest ever edition. It certainly was. Around 22,000 people uh, projected by some army sources. And while actually South Korean military authorities believe it could have been up to 30,000 if you count all the personnel there. And as much as this was North Korea's 75th anniversary of its army, the regime tends to go really big on these milestone years ending with fives and zeros. And they wanted to make this one stand out, uh, particularly given that this week also marked the 60th anniversary of the army's slogan, uh, declared by leader Kim Jong-un's grandfather and, of course, regime founder Kim Il-sung. Right, a match for 100. That's right. And what this means is that one North Korean troop should be enough to take out 100 of the enemy. And state media, they really reinforced this message in the days running up to the February 8th parade. And Kim Jong-un reportedly ordered his military to increase their war preparedness. And the parade was also intended to show um, their, quote, war deterrence and counter-strike capabilities. Right. Now, speaking of the weaponry displayed at the military parade, uh, it seems that many were looking out for improvement in missile development, particularly when it comes to the engine. Exactly. You're very right, Tammy. So, uh, particularly when it comes to North Korea's largest missile developed so far, the Hwasong-17, that runs on uh, liquid fuel engines. and. When it comes to military use, though, solid fuel is uh, preferred as it's less likely to explode and it can be stored much more easily, too, uh, without requiring as much space as liquid fuel does. And so you could say that solid fuel engines would make it safer, quicker and, of course, easier to prepare for launching very quickly. They're also easier to hide in land mobile deployments. And the North has been trying to develop solid engine ICBMs as part of its five-year plan on strengthening national defense, along with hypersonic missiles, submarine launch ballistic missiles, satellites and uh, reconnaissance drones, of course. They claim to have successfully tested a solid fuel engine in December, and we saw what are presumed to be new ICBMs with solid fuel engines, but then again, the question is whether we can really take their word for it. Exactly. There have always been questions as to the weapons at the military parade can be used. Right. So it's a completely different question whether or not they're deployable or not, whether they're operational or not. And mm -hmm. exactly, that's exactly why experts say we shouldn't naturally just assume that they're automatically deployable. You have to remember that the parade is all about the optics and creating a buzz. And well, here's what Professor Kim young -gyu at the Asia, uh, East Asia Institute had to say. If it is a solid fuel missile, this is going to be a real big change because that means that we will have less time to detect the missile. We'll have less time to uh, think about our countermeasures if they are actually targeting something because is if it is fuel, uh, solid fuel missiles, they can just prepare for it and just launch it anytime they want. So that if that is the real solid fuel missiles, it's going to be really big change. And I've heard it many experts saying that if this Hwasong-17 missile have the MIRV, like multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle uh, with more than dozens of missiles of them, which that can actually surpass the U.S. missile defense system. But what I would just want to say that this is just this is a parade. It's not a test. They have never not, they have not demonstrated these missiles are operational. Now, going back to your report, you said in your report that the parade was delivering a message uh, to the U.S. Now, what message did it have for the domestic audience, Dan? A false display of bravado, I would say. Uh, mm. a really a plea for unity as the regime deals with a flailing economy, which was bad enough already before it started shrinking after the COVID-19 pandemic with two straight years of decline in 2020 and 2021. Kim Jong-un himself has admitted the North's failure to reach economic goals and we're even hearing reports of worsening food insecurity towards the country too. We've seen over the past years that the tougher things are internally, the more the regime tends to lash out. And that's possibly why we saw the regime fire a record number of missiles, over 70 last year in 2022. And they're very likely to launch more provocations this year, though perhaps through less uh, costly means such as drones and cyber warfare. 
there's not really much to be optimistic about for the North Korean economy going ahead. So Kim Jong-un really needs to rally his people around the flag. And that's exactly what these parades are meant to do. They're supposed to reinforce national pride, unity and really make people believe they're enduring hardship to fight against an external enemy. Right. And just to add on, another interesting spot at the military parade was the attendance of the leaders a daughter, Kim Joo-hye, she's been quite visible on state media in the past few days. Yeah, she certainly has. Uh, she's uh, believed to be around nine or ten years old. Mm. And, well, it's very interesting to see pictures of Kim Jong-un's uh, daughter turning up at these state events um, hand in hand with her father. And she appeared in the public eye last November for the first time. And the military parade on Wednesday night was her fifth media appearance. And you can actually see from uh, the state media that, that her status has been elevated. Uh, from being described as Kim's beloved daughter to something like esteemed child. And mm -hmm. she's also walking next to her father in these photos, sitting right next to him and conversing very freely. And this is um, this bears great contrast to her mother, who is walking slightly behind them. So you can see that the spotlight on this child is quite intentional. Right. Kim, father and daughter seem quite intimate. Mm -hmm. Now, some people are saying that she may be his successor. Is that theory gaining force after the military parade? What do you think? Well, honestly, I would say it's much too early to yeah. tell because, well, I have seen the international press coverage on this. Uh, they were all over the sighting of this girl at the parade. And I, too, of course, found it fascinating. It's unprecedented. But we have to remember that she's only about nine or ten years old. And her father, Kim Jong-un, is only 39. So, yes, there are definitely theories about his health as well as, um, you know, whether he, he's OK or not. Uh, but in practical terms, it's going to be very difficult to really imagine her leading this very highly conservative and patriarchal regime if he, even if he dies in the next few years or even in 10 years' time. I mean, never say never, but also at this point, it is much too early to be making any meaningful predictions, mm -hmm. I would say. And it's probably more productive to think about the more immediate goals that the regime might have in really placing her under the spotlight right now. So. This is what uh, Professor Kim has to say. It's like a European style monarchy and Kim Joo-hye is, is, is girl, is not a boy. And I think they're intentionally treating her like a princess, like by high ranking you know, military leaders or by Kim Jong-un himself wearing nice dress, so on and so on. And it's, it's just trying to show the image that they are not villains. So uh, I think the what Kim Jong Un really wants to send the message through, you know, portraying her. Uh, I mean, his his daughter is that um, they are not really the bad guys, and also um, what they are doing is for the future generation to come. And for, because of that, they will never give up nuclear weapons, or they can never give up, you know, developing missile programs. All right, this is where we'll have to wrap things up. Thank you so much for coming in today, Sio. Pleasure to be here, Tommy.